Hi and welcome to HRM 140 Part 5-1 which will cover chapters 19 to 21. Part 5 is going to cover the hotel and its employees and each chapter we talk about will review a different aspect of that topic. In this chapter, our chapter 19 lecture, we'll discuss the wage and hour laws applicable to employees. Our discussion will cover the interaction between a hotel and its employees. It will cover both state and federal laws in this area but we're mainly going to talk about civil law instead of criminal law today. Today in our competencies, we're going to review who and what is covered by these laws, some of the specifics of each law, and potential consequences for violation thereof. In this chapter and in this class, we will barely scratch the surface of the laws and regulations relating to this area of hospitality. And I caution you up front that before you enter into a position, uh, where you're responsible for employees, you must become familiar with the laws in your area. Let's start at the top with federal laws and then move on to some of the state laws. The major federal law we'll cover today is the Fair Labor Standards Act, or FLSA. This broad and sweeping legislation, which is also known as the Federal Wage and Hour Law, regulates the minimum amount an employee must be paid, the number of hours they can work, and how pay rates changed based on the number of hours worked, issues in equal pay, record keeping requirements, child labor laws, and on and on. The FLSA is enforced by the Wage and Hour Division of the U.S. Department of Labor. The FLA, FLSA's best known provision is minimum wage. Essentially, this provision sets the minimum amount an hourly employee may be paid. Each state is free to set their own minimum wage with the caveat that it cannot be less than the federal minimum wage set forth in the FLSA. If there's a difference between the state and federal minimum, the employee will get the higher of the two. The FLSA also defines overtime and when overtime pay applies. Generally speaking, if an employee is over 16 years of age, there's no limit to the amount of hours they may work. However, if a non-exempt employee works more than 40 hours in a defined seven-day work week, that employee is entitled to one and a half times their regular rate of pay. The FLSA does not require that overtime pay be, be given for work on weekends, holidays, or regular days of rest unless overtime is worked on such days. FLSA also has strict record-keeping requirements and mandates that posters informing employees of their rights should be posted in a conspicuous place at all times. Finally, FLSA has protections in place for children to make sure that work does not interfere with their schoolwork or interfere with their health and well-being. Penalties for violations of the FLSA can be stiff. And while I won't go into specifics shown on this chart, it's worth noting that even a single violation can bring penalties in the tens of thousands of dollars. In your additional materials, I provided you with a copy of the North Carolina Wage and Hours Law. This law, which covers all North Carolina employers, mirrors the federal laws in many ways and is administered by the North Carolina Wage and Hour Division of the North Carolina Department of Labor. As you can see, many of the same areas are covered here as those in the FLSA. The one major difference is that the interstate commerce requirement is not present in the North Carolina law. The effect is that this law covers all employers without exception in the state of North Carolina. Before we finish, there's two other federal, federal laws I want to touch on briefly. You should already be familiar with them if you've ever gotten a paycheck. Those are the laws commonly known as FICA and FUDA. FICA is the Federal Insurance Contributions Act, and FUDA is the Federal Employment Tax Act. If you've ever wondered why the money that ultimately goes into your checking account is less than you thought, chances are these are two of the culprits. Your employer is required to deduct a calculated amount from each dollar you earn and then send that money, along with some matching funds, to the federal government on your behalf. The idea is that the government will take care of this money until you need it for Social Security or if you become unemployed. That concludes our very broad overview of the wage and hour laws you should be aware of as a hospitality manager. While your text goes into more detail and provides some decent illustrative cases, 
I would once again strongly encourage you to review and familiarize yourself with these laws before taking on a position that handles employees. I hope if you have any questions, you won't hesitate to reach out to me. Until then, have a great day.